Tuesdays, and we've got... Hey, everybody, welcome to Crack Pack Tuesday, number 87 on the Mana Leak. I'm John, as always, and we've got ourselves some more Kaladesh. I'm just never going to open a masterpiece, so I'm not even going to pretend that there's one in here. Reverse psychology. Uh, this is our third last Kaladesh pack. We, of course, have this one. And then we have this one, which we'll open next week, uh, right after, uh, right after Christmas, right after Christmas. And then we'll have one more right after New Year's Day. Of course, the week after that will be in set review. That'll be, uh, the red set review, the black set review, one of the set reviews. And then the week after that, of course, we will have a pack of Ether Revolt, but we're going to open this pack of Kaladesh, see what's in it and see what we would take. Pack one, pick one. If this was a draft. Up first, we have ourselves a Cathartic Reunion. Cathartic Reunion is one in a red for a sorcery as an additional cost to cast Cathartic Reunion. Discard two cards, draw three cards. This is fine. I've played this here and there. It's not great and certainly not a first pick. Up next, we have Fragmentize. Fragmentize is a single white mana for a sorcery. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. I always forget the enchantment part uh, with converted mana cost four or less. Fine card. Again, I'm not on the train of main decking this in draft a lot of the times. I'll main deck it in sealed every time. Draft, I tend to pre prefer to leave this in the sideboard, but it is nice to have, but it's nowhere near a first pick. Up next, we have Kujar Seed Sculptor. Kujar Seed Sculptor is one and a green for a creature elf druid. It's a 1-2, and uh, when it enters the battlefield, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. So it's a 2-3 for two, which is fine, or it counter goes on something more relevant, like a flyer. Kujar Seed Sculptor is really good. I love to have multiples of these in green decks. I hate first picking it. I don't think I first picked it. Hopefully this won't be a pack where we first pick it, but we all know what happens with Kaladesh, right? Up next, we have Ambitious Aetherborn. Ambitious Aetherborn is four and a black for a creature. Aetherborn Artificer, it's a 4-3. It has Fabricate 1, so it's a 5-4, or it's a 4-3 with a 1-1. One, one. Both are totally fine modes, and both have their places. Uh, I like Ambitious Aetherborns, especially in my black-white decks, but nowhere near a first pick. Much more mid-pack. Up next is Inventor's Goggles. Inventor's Goggles is one generic mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus two. And uh, whenever an artificer enters the battlefield, you can equip these for free. Otherwise, they cost two to equip. They're fine. Again, I've played them, and I haven't been terribly excited by them. But putting them on a train or something ridiculous is pretty good. Them on a Bastion Mastodon is really nice. Uh, but it's not a first pick card, and it's a, it's a card you can get pretty late in the packs. Up next is Giant Spectacle, a card that I'm totally okay with. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's great. I, I think it's fine. One in a red for an enchantment or enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus one and has menace. If your opponent stumbles in any way, shape, or form, you kill them with a creature with this card, especially on turn three. I like it. I will play it in a number of my red aggro decks. Um, be careful. It has the obvious caveat that you're going to lose two cards if they kill the creature that you put it on. Um, but, you know, I think it's fine. It's definitely not madcap skills, but it is close. It's a lot closer than some people give it credit for. Up next is Impeccable Timing. One and a white for an instant. Impeccable Timing deals three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. I think Impeccable Timing is fine. A lot of people have gone really down on this card, and I think they're wrong. Um, it kills Renegade Freighter, which is really, really, really important in this format. I think this is a totally fine card. I would first pick it. I would certainly prefer something better, but I would have no qualms first picking on Impeccable Timing. So it can stay in frame. Up next, we have a Consulate Skygate. Consulate Skygate is two generic mana for an artifact creature wall. With Defender, it has Reach. It's an 0-4. It's fine. You know, it's totally fine. It can definitely buy you some time if you are a dirtily deck. You're not going to want this in every deck. Make sure that you know that you do want to be playing this. Otherwise, keep it in the sideboard, but nowhere near a first pick. Up next is Curio Vendor, and this is our final common. So we have a foil Let's hope it's a foil fancy card. Uh, Curio Vendor, one and a blue for a creature Vidalkin with no class. It's a 2-1. That's it. You probably shouldn't play this. There's no blue deck that wants a 2-1 for two. That's more of a red thing, maybe a black thing. Certainly not a blue thing. You're not going to play it. Don't pick it. Certainly not first. Our first on commons, pretty solid. Fairgrounds Warden, two and a white for a creature dwarf soldier. It's a 1-3. When it enters the battlefield, exile target creature on opponent controls until Fairgrounds Warden leaves the battlefield absolutely amazing it's fiend hunter uh slightly easier to cast because it's two and a white rather than one 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 white white which fiend hunter is yeah you can't do weird infinite things but you typically never really did a weird infinite thing in innistrad limited either with 
Um, Fiend Hunter, that was more a constructed thing. Fairgrounds Warden, just super, super solid removal. Easy first pick card in this pack. Our next on common is a Fairgrounds Trumpeter, two and a green for a creature elephant. It's a 2 2. At the beginning of each end step, if a plus one plus one counter was placed on a permanent you control this turn, then put a plus one plus one counter on Fairgrounds Trumpeter. It's fine. I've never gone off with it. I've seen it probably fail more than I've seen it go off. So I'm not super sold on it. I don't think I'd ever first pick it. But if you were really big into green white fabricate or green black counters, I could see it, but it's not really my jam. Our final on common is a Brazen Scourge. Brazen Scourge is one red red for a creature gremlin, 3-3 three, three haste. Solid card, totally fine. It doesn't feel great as a first pick. It is relatively vanilla, but in this format, red aggro just dominates, just can absolutely crush any deck in this format. So I'd probably consider first picking a Brazen Scourge. Certainly not over a Fairgrounds Warden, but I'd definitely consider it at least. Our rare is Sahili's Artistry. Four blue blue for a sorcery. Uh, choose one or both. Create a token that's a copy of target artifact and or create a token. I'm reading this from very far away. Uh, that's a copy of target creature, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. So basically you get two copies of a gear hulk or you get a copy of an artifact and a copy of a creature. You get stuff. You get a bunch of stuff for four blue blue. And boy, if you do copy, even if you copy a Bastion Mastodon twice, you're getting uh, 8, 10 Vigilant Power for 6 mana. Ridiculous. Sahili's Artistry, very, very good. Definitely a first pick card. Frankly, I think Impeccable Timing can probably just be pulled out. And we can leave Sahili's Artistry in there in the discussion. We have a foil, guys. We have a foil. It's not a masterpiece. It is pretty, though. It is rather pretty. It's a prophetic prism. It's a shiny prophetic prism. Uh, two generic mana for an artifact when it enters the battlefield, draw a card, pay one, tap it to turn that color, to turn that whatever mana into, uh, whatever other mana you wish to have. Prophetic prism, totally fine, but I don't think I'd ever first pick it. Really good though. I, I'd pick it relatively highly. So we're going to look at Brazen Scourge, Fairgrounds Warden. We can bring impeccable timing back, but spoiler alert, it's not going to be the pick. I think the pick really is between Sahili's Artistry and Fairgrounds Warden. One is really solid removal on a body um, that's going to come down. You know, you're going to have three mana. If you don't hit three mana, you have no chance of winning the game. Sahili's Artistry, you've got to hit six. You've got to hit six blue-blue. And you've got to be playing blue. And blue is not as bad as we all thought at the start. But it's, you know, it's not amazing. That's that's for darn sure. But I still think Sahili's Artistry is just such high power. You know, just such high power. Being able to get two copies of the best artifact creature or being able to get a copy of the best creature plus the best artifact, super, super powerful. I wouldn't fault anybody for taking Fairgrounds Warden. I think that's probably the safer bet. But Sahili's Artistry just has some serious power behind it. Let me know what you'd have taken in the comments below and in the poll in the top right-hand corner, which I will remember to actually put in this video. Uh, would you have taken the Artistry, the Warden, the Timing, the Scourge, the Shiny Prism? Let me know in the comments down below in that poll. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Leak. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me at Facebook.com slash TheManaLeak, Twitch.tv slash TheManaLeak, and of course, Patreon.com slash TheManaLeak if you do want to become a backer, one of the... Uh, cool rewards of a backer is if you hit $60 at any point in time. If it takes you 60 months at a dollar to get there or one month at $60, whenever you hit a lifetime total of $60, you will get this playmat. This playmat here. I will send you a Mana League playmat. Uh, there are, of course, other rewards. You can sponsor drafts, which means you get all the cards from that draft. You can get access to the patrons only stream on Patreon. You can get access to uh, early top 10 Thursday list ideas, as well as early set review notes if you want to get a, a head start on my set reviews. So make sure you do check out patreon.com slash the Mana League. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, see you all next time.